I'm going to show you how you can build AI employees to run your business for you. It can use and reply to customers using your website. It can gather support tickets from customers, allowing them to talk to a human under different categories, collect those support tickets, then use AI to reply to those support tickets and allow us to send those emails with a custom send grid integration using this tool. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get started. All you need to do is click the top link down below in the description and start your trial with ChatIQ. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create an account using Google. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up for an account using this email. We're going to give it a couple of seconds to load. It's then going to bring us to the free trial page. So we're going to go ahead and start a free trial. So put in your card information and then start your free trial. So I put my card information, then we're just going to start a free trial. It's not going to charge a card, don't worry about it. Uh, once that goes through, it's going to take us to the dashboard where we can then customize and build our first AI chatbots. Cool, so I've just approved that trial. I'm going to wait for a second for that to process. And we are going to basically give a chatbot all of the information from our website. So once you've done that, it's going to take us to the dashboard. Now, we're going to follow through these very simple steps. It's incredibly easy to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to upload some data for the chatbot. And for this, we're going to use the web scraper. So I'm going to put in my website, and we're just going to let it go to the website and extract all of the text from every single page on that website. Depending on the security of your website, this will either scrape all of the links, it may only scrape a few of them. If you run into any issues, you can always email for support, uh, and we can then scrape or build the chatbot for you. So you can see here, it's collected a whole load of links from the website. Then what we're going to do is give it a tag. So imagine this is like organizing the files for our chatbot. Then we're going to scrape those URLs. It's then going to prompt us to now build our chatbot. So first of all, it's going to go ahead and process all of these URLs. Uh, you can see here it's going through each one separately, one by one, and basically adding this to a custom database that we can then use to build custom chatbots. Uh, the URL link is showing us three dots, by the way, just because the links are too long. Uh, but all we need to do now is select all the data, create chatbot. It's usually good practice to wait until all of this is done, especially if you're scraping more than 10 URLs. You can also upload PDF files as well and different text files if any data is missing from this. We're then going to click on create chatbot. We're going to give this a name, so I'm going to call it chat IQ. Uh, an introduction greeting message, which you'll see what that looks like in a second. So hello, I'm chat IQ. How can I help? Uh, we're going to leave the custom branding for now. If you have additional files in here, you can go ahead and select them. You can see we've got the nine sources selected. Again, it isn't showing the links uh, just because the links are too long, but we're going to go ahead and build the chatbot. You can now see we've now got a chatbot ready to use on our website. That is trained on these nine different URLs. We've got about two and a half thousand words. Typically, I try and recommend you get over 10,000 words for your chatbot. Here we can see in the data feed, we've got all of the data that we've just imported and our chatbot is now ready to go. So all we need to do is start to customize our chatbot. So scroll down here, you want to add your logo and you want to add the widget logo. The widget logo is this logo down here in the corner. This is the logo that we will be using for our chatbot's widget. For now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. The only thing I'm going to do is change the color of the chatbot. So we're going to make sure the user bubble color is that and then we're gonna save those settings. Uh, this, by the way, is the chatbot that's currently being used in ChatIQ, so I'm gonna use this as a demonstration. Uh, what is ChatIQ? We're gonna do, can you respond in any language? And then we're gonna put here, talk to a human. Cool, actually what I might do is I might change that to can I talk to a human? So what we're then going to do is change the text. And by the way, this stuff here are, is the, the greeting, these steps here. So if we just save those changes, you can see those have now updated. Uh, what I am also going to do is change the text of this bit here to uh, talk to a human. So now people know that if they click on this button, they can then talk to a human. And we can customize the categories uh, as well if we want to by coming into ticketing. Uh, if we want to, we can just turn that off and just have the chatbot as it is. But we're going to leave ticketing turned on. Cool. Next thing we want to do is actually embed this into our website. So if you come over to here, click on launch, we're going to copy this code here and we're going to go to our website builder. I'm going to be using Webflow for my website builder and we're going to paste the code in here. So we're just going to delete the old one. We're going to paste the new one in and then we're going to save that code. 
Once that's done, we're then going to publish it to our website. So now, when we load up the website, let's just go to Chat IQ. You can see here, we now have the chatbot in the corner of our website. All we need to do is start to use the chatbot. So now the chatbot is trained on the website's data. So if we ask it, for example, what is Chat IQ? It's gonna go ahead and read all the information from the website and give a response. It's gonna collect customer emails and it's gonna allow them to submit a support ticket. Now, the other thing that we can do is actually adjust the way it's responding. But I want you to notice how fast this is responding. And the reason this is responding very, very quickly is because the chatbot is creating its own custom memory, which allows us to do two things. If we don't like how the chatbot's responding, we can actually customize the responses. So now what we're gonna do is come back to the chatbot and we're going to train up the chatbot and make sure it fully understands everything about our business. So let's say, for example, I ask, how can I cancel my subscription? We're gonna go ahead and ask that question now. And it's gonna take a few seconds to load as it generates that first reply. If we do not like that first reply, all we need to do is adjust the response from this chatbot. So for example, to cancel your subscription in ChatIQ, you can come to settings and plans, your account, and then manage plan. So we want to adjust the response to use that. So if we click on this button here, it's gonna open up this adjust response. Uh, if this number doesn't show up, then refresh the page, ask the same question again, and then you wanna ask these questions. So we're gonna say to cancel your subscription, um, you can access your account settings within the app for the cancellation process. So we're gonna change this. Okay, so I've drafted out a new response. I've said, if you would like to cancel your subscription, for chat IQ, simply log in here. I've put the here in square brackets and then in normal brackets, I've put the URL. I then said, then head to settings and plans, manage plan, cancel subscription. If you have any other issues and you'd like additional support, you can either email us at help chat IQ or uh, submit a ticket using the button below. I then added this phrase CMD handoff and you'll see what's going to happen now. When we update this response, we're going to be given a button that allows us to submit a support ticket. So directly within the chat, we can now submit a ticket. It's hyperlinked the here button. So now if anybody on the website does click this, it will take them directly to that link. Uh, and then obviously we've got the rest of the information. So the really cool thing about this is when we actually refresh the chat and we then ask the same question again, so we'll just paste that in here. How can I cancel my subscription? It's going to use the updated response. And now it's using that new reply. And obviously if we had this on our website, you could see that updated response. So we're gonna come back to the website. This is obviously the chatbot that we've just built. If we come to here and we give it the, uh, how can I cancel my subscription? We'll send that message and it now should use that updated response live on our website and collect emails. Now, if somebody submits a support ticket, we wanna set up uh, automated responses using SendGrid. So let's say for example, somebody submits a support ticket to our business using these details. Uh, we'll just put cancel plan and they submit that support ticket they've used that chatbot to submit the support ticket now as a business that ticket has come through here under our chatbot we can see that support ticket it's come through from test at gmail here we've got the cancel plan if we reply to this we can actually see that person's conversation with the chatbot and we can then use an ai prompt to actually write a response to this email so I've put a prompt here saying, tell the customer we've canceled their plan and they will not be charged. We're then gonna send that to the AI and it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna use that prompt to draft out a response to that customer. And it's also gonna use the custom data that we uploaded earlier in its, uh, basically so it can actually reference that if it needs to in the email as well. We're then going to put in a response from whoever. We can then put in customer support if we really wanted to. You can see it said, hey, we, um, we successfully canceled your plan and we'll, you will not be charged. If you have any further questions or need any assistance with anything else, feel free to reach out to us. We can then send that email via SendGrid, but we first need to set that up in settings. So if you come to the settings slash plans, head to integrations, all we need to do is paste in our API key for SendGrid here. We then put in the email that's set up with SendGrid and then we're gonna put in the send from name. Uh, I usually do chat IQ support, but you can set up whichever way you want, and then you want to save that integration. Then, when you come back to the tickets, you can now actually respond to that using the send grid integration, and I'll do a live demonstration of this now. So I've actually logged into the account that I'm using for chat IQ's chatbot. We're gonna submit a support ticket. This is what it looks like here. We can see some support tickets here. These are examples that I've done before. We're gonna log in. We're just going to put in an example here. We're going to put in a real email address. 
this is the spam email that I use. We're then going to put that information through. We're going to say cancel and refund me. We're then going to send that ticket through. Then, as a business owner, that support ticket has now come through. I have already set up under integrations. So this will look like once you've got your API key set up. You can actually send out a test email just to make sure it's all working. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to respond to this email account. So this customer obviously sent in an email on the website. Now as a business owner, we're going to respond to that support ticket. So we're just going to click on reply. Uh, and what we're going to do in this case, we're going to say uh, we've... So we're going to say tell the customer their subscription is cancelled but we can't offer refunds. So we're going to see what the AI does with that, and it's going to turn that into a full email response, and it's also going to use the knowledge base that we uploaded in its email if it needs to reference that. We received your refund request to cancel your subscription. We've processed your cancellation, and subscription has successfully been terminated. Please note, as per our policy, we're unable to offer refunds and cancel subscriptions. If you've got any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for using ChatIQ. Best regards. All I need to do is put in... Uh, I'm going to put in my name, and you can see here, it knows about the name of the software, and knows about the system or the business that we're running, because it's referencing that knowledge base that we uploaded. Uh, so now, all we need to do, you can see here we have a send grid integration, so we're going to click on send, email has been sent, the customer has received your AI response. So now we can actually close that support ticket. So the only part of the human in the loop is you going in and giving a prompt to the AI to then write that email. You can see that email has come through here. As a business, I can now open that email. And this is obviously the email that's come in. It's come in from Help at Chat IQ using the SendGrid integration. So guys, if you want to set up your own AI agent for your software, for your business, go ahead and click the top link down below in the description and start your free trial today.